Looks like I'm eating some sort of like skeleton. Hey you guys, I'm super excited about today's episode because I will be fermenting these young, raw bamboo shoots that I harvested just a couple days ago at my friend's place. I was, man, I had such a crazy adventure there. It was so much fun to, to kind of hike through the bamboo forest and harvest these on my own with my own two hands. I've seen these on television in uh, Taiwan or Hong Kong, not Hong Kong, Taiwan or Japan where they enter the forest to harvest their own and they'll grill it right out there to eat. And um, some of the bamboos are edible raw and some are not. It has a very astringent uh, taste to it that you actually have to boil it in water a couple of times to get all that sort of like uh, strong bamboo pungent kind of like a smell and the the chemical in there that makes it really unpleasant to them to to eat but this variety you can eat raw so i am so so excited about it it is a seasonal um, item you know i went there at a really good time during spring that's when they pop up kind of like eating asparagus they they're basically the young shoots you know uh, baby plants that would kind of uh some would kind of grow out from the roots it, so certain types of bamboos will spread and some will not and some will do like more clumping kind of a, a growth. So you have to be careful with choosing the type of bamboos for your own space to grow. And um, the thing about these is that bamboos are kind of like fruits when you pick fruits and you lay them on the countertop, they will still continue to ripen up. So will bamboo shoots, so you gotta process them, you gotta eat them, ferment them, cook them however you want to do, you gotta eat them as soon as you know after you pick them because they will get less tender they'll get really tough very fibrous until the point it's basically you can't eat them so when you can't bend them when it's not flexible it reaches a certain height then you can't eat that much of the bamboo maybe it would just be the I'm not sure is it the top or the bottom part that's going to be tender so you only eat the tender part basically so if you wait too long to harvest them you might as well let them grow out and use it to build something. A trellis, um, buildings, you know, houses in Asia, they still use bamboos for scaffoldings. In Hong Kong up till today, they still use bamboos as scaffolding. So that's really cool that they are still using, you know, something of a more uh, traditional method for preparing and for construction work. And um, bamboo has, you know, it's very tough, but it's at the same time, it's kind of like bendable it's it's flexible so it's really cool that when they're still fresh you can carefully flex them in a certain way and hold it in that position and so you'll be able to get like a curve out of it to build like an arch or something and the great thing about uh, bamboo is that it contains um, something called silica that's in you know the bamboos actually bamboo by the way is a grass it's probably like the tallest grass it's the fastest growing thing out there that's why it's more eco-friendly to use uh, products like like toilet paper or paper towels or paper made of bamboo because it's a much more sustainable way uh, of living you know they grow like grass literally they at a right environment they actually grow really fast kind of like um, well it is a grass so it grows pretty fast nothing like trees that it would take generations or even a century to grow and you cut them down and and they're gone but bamboo is very sustainable that way that they because they grow so fast so uh, yeah so it has something called silica in the bamboo shoots also in the leaves so you can dry the young bamboo leaves uh, to make tea out of it and this property in there called silica helps with your bone health your skin and your hair and nails it's it gives you that elasticity elasticity or like a, a you know a flexibility to you know your joints your and to build strong bones it's all part of the whole package it's not only calcium that helps with your bone health there's like you know I think it's magnesium uh, vitamin D vitamin C um, um, and silica as another big one for bone health just kind of like collagen you know it helps with um, 
giving you like good skin and you know that elasticity you were looking for in the skin to stay youthful nice hair and nails and all that silica is also a big one in there so it's really awesome to be eating bamboo shoots to gain that property or that benefit and the thing about bamboo is that it is so popular in a lot of asian cuisines in thai indian chinese japanese you know uh, Vietnamese. Um, it's a very tasty, has a really nice crunch to it. Some people don't like the way it tastes because of that strong smell. I forget what that property is called but I'm gonna figure it out and leave that name down below right here. So basically that th that chemical is, I think it's toxic or something but it's definitely not good tasting. It's very astringent and so there are certain types of bamboos that don't have as much of that property in it. The ones that do, you would have to cook them first. So you would first boil it out in the water a couple of times until that chemical leaches out of the bamboo. Then you could use the bamboo for cooking or pickling. But in this case, this is a special variety. There are a few varieties out there that you can eat them raw because it doesn't have that kind of chemical in there or it doesn't contain as high of that, as that, you know, as the other kind of um, bamboos. So you can eat these raw. I actually ate it on site when I harvest these. It was so, so much fun to do. So uh, let's, before we start fermenting, I'm gonna show you guys the clip of that adventure that I was on. Let's roll the camera. This is a total bamboo forest. Oh my god. <laughs> Where am I? Yeah, I wanna sell them. You know, because I gotta harvest them. See, it's not green yet. Yeah. When, they're, when they're young, they're white. I see if there's any more. Such a nice crunch. Ooh. Oh my god, you can like pickle this. You can like ferment this. Oh my god, you can do ferment bamboo shoot. This is so cool. I'm, I'm so greedy. I'm trying to get the whole thing. Wishing I could be like a, bam a panda right now. I've never climbed bamboos before. Wait, these are elephant garlic from my friend's place also. Garlic, you're supposed to cut off the flower buds to let the energy concentrate on growing the buds. That's why we cut these out and you can do nice sauteing or pickling with it but today I think it's gonna be really nice to ferment some of the bamboo shoots with this garlic flavor so let's get started so I'm gonna be doing this fermenting pretty quickly here but if you guys want details on how to do it and I explain all that sort of stuff uh, with a past episode that I will link you guys down below here or up on the top of the cards so you can go check out how to ferment your own foods the things I'll be using today is actually going to be a nice size, a good size mason jar, and I really have been loving using these ferment, these lids that are designed for fermenting your foods because it also, it comes with a pump to uh, extract the air out so you have even less chance for mold. But you know, you don't have to use something fancy or anything special, you can just use the good old traditional way of uh, fermenting foods which I have shown in the past episode. So be sure to go check out that video that I'll link below. Some parts of it that's exposed to the air has already oxidized. You can see that it's a little more brown, whereas when I picked them fresh, they were white and um, the leaves are drying out. So let's start preparing this. Just peel this away. So you can see how I peel this off. Isn't that beautiful? It's totally like paper already. So that's it. I just kind of snap this off. I can compost this. This is the part I'm going to try to cut this. Okay, it's getting easier to cut. Looks like it grows out, it's softer on the top, and it starts to mature from the bottom. 
Okay, once it starts cutting like butter, I'm just going to slice this down this way. I mean, there's no right way to do it. It's just kind of like your preference. And I like to think of it because it has such a nice bite to it. I like to think about how the texture would taste. Don't forget to keep a bucket right with you. I've had, you know, canned or jarred ones that they soak them in like citric acid or something and sometimes maybe even even a couple different kind of preservatives and if you want to try fresh bamboo shoots you can probably find them at Asian markets they have the canned ones pickled ones jarred ones uh, even fresh like fresh raw ones that are packet packaged in um, the produce section this cuts kind of like butter once it gets to the segment, it gets a little tough. Okay. Look how beautiful this is. So you can actually put them, lay them flat like that and grill them up. I'm sure that's really tasty. But yeah, when you open it like that, you can see all these beautiful layers. So that's sort of a faster way to do it, especially if you use two hands. I'm just going to prep all of these up and I'm going to have my mom actually do a stir fry because she loves these stir fry. They're really good in soups, stir fries, a lot of vegetarian dishes uh, use them. Like, it looks like those architecture in like those ancient like Cambodia kind of like architecture. Beautiful. This is like a delicacy because <laughs> you really gotta get them at the right time, the right season, pick them at the right time. Uh, cook them or prepare them to eat right away pretty much Basically, it's just some salt water. I'm actually gonna add the rest of it with water. I just got some water. This is just some filtered water because, woo, it's coming up. This is a glass weight. It just helps to keep everything underwater to prevent mold. Ideally, you'd want to fill this jar up but because I don't have other, I'm out of wide mouth jars right now, so I'm just going to have to use ones larger than I actually need. Because uh, these lids would only fit on the wide mouth jars. Okay, so I just extracted all the air out. That's basically it. I'm just going to let this sit in a countertop for... A few days, a week, depending on how sour you want it to ferment, and then it would go in the fridge, which would slow down the fermentation process once you think it's at a stage that's, you know, to your taste. So it's been about two weeks since I fermented the bamboo shoots, and I thought I would give you guys a little update on how it went since it was my first time fermenting them, um, especially fermenting them raw. So here they are. So the result is actually very surprising to me. This is the one with the garlic, 
uh, garlic buds. Also, I added a cauliflower in there because I just had like one leftover I, and I was just feeling pretty full. I didn't want to have any, so I thought I would just, what the heck, put it in here to ferment. So actually, that turned out being really helpful for the fermenting process because the other jar you can see here is more cloudy. This is the nothing but the brine, the sea salt, water, and the bamboo shoots in this one. And this one, I gotta say, smells a little stinky, like, like a little bit like rotting kind of a smell. So not good at all. And they're actually really soft and soggy in there. So the texture did not hold up that all at all. It's definitely, I think it's more like rotting than fermenting. So don't do that. <laughs> So what I've learned so far is that, you know, if you're fermenting things raw, there are certain vegetables and actually there are a lot of vegetables that you can ferment raw. But what I have done in the past uh, making sauerkrauts or different types of ferments or kimchi is I, I usually add some sort of cruciferous vegetable in there or even some garlic. So garlic by itself will ferment really well, also any kind of cruciferous vegetables. And so if I add anything with garlic or cruciferous vegetables such as kale or cabbage, something like that in there, along with some other ingredients, everything in the jar will ferment really well. So that's why, I think that's why in this case, the uh, bamboo shoots, you know, the the crunchiness of it held up really well. Also, it's not stinky. It smells like it's fermented, like a good ferment kind of a tart smell in here. And nice fresh garlic in there as well. So yeah, don't ferment raw bamboo shoots by itself. <laughs> as far as I know, it didn't work. But I was just really excited to be making this video for you guys, to share with you guys more so in this video. and like. You know how you would prepare bamboo shoots what they look like because usually if you look at them and they're just like layers beyond like layers of of like tough fibrous leaves like I wouldn't know what to do with it and so I thought I would share that experience with you guys and now you guys know not to ferment them by themselves if you want to ferment them stay with mix it up with some classic ingredients like garlic onions um, cabbage or even napa cabbage or something like that in there so i'll show you guys this one let's have a little taste test on this mm. oh i also added chili in there just for some flavor so isn't this crazy <laughs> Looks like I'm eating some sort of like skeleton. Mmm. Spicy, salty, garlicky, crunchy, sour. It's perfect. <laughs> so I think this would be really good to go with some salad. It just creates like a really nice, like bamboo shoots has like a, a crunchy, crispy texture, but similar to like a very young like the crunch of a an asparagus shoot I would say like asparagus yeah so it's just yeah it just kind of also takes on the flavors of anything because it has a very neutral mild almost tasteless but mostly used for texture but also there are like I mentioned silica the mineral in there that really helps with hair skin nails um, you know the how do I say it? the elasticity of of um and our flexibility of our joints and all that so really good to eat definitely not to have with every single meal but you know once in a while and rotating my diet adding some bamboo shoots there in there here and there it's really enjoyable and also very beneficial for my health thank you all so much for joining me on this episode you guys I hope you learned what to do and what not to do I really enjoy making videos to share my experience, to document, and um, 
you know, share some of the, the fun that I have with you guys. So be sure to check out my past episodes and the next one that's coming up is going to be on that adventure I went on harvesting these bamboo shoots and so much more out there. So yeah, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, where I do instant updates of my life, what I'm growing, what I'm eating, and where, where I'm at. And if you'd like to support me on my work, I really appreciate that. Please go check out wendyland.com. I'll leave a link just below this video for you guys. And um, oh yeah, if you guys are interested in growing this bamboo shoot, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I can talk to my friend about, um, you know, supplying some of these uh, shoots for you guys if possible. So yeah, let me know. Take care, you guys. Stay, stay vibrant, stay safe and healthy. And I'll see you right back here in the next video. Bye.